Hello and welcome back to our tutorial series on ESP SystemWise, the most powerful selection software for your commercial building needs. In this segment, we're going to cover some basic pump selection. Once you've logged into SystemWise, you'll see that there's a tab at the top left where you can make a pump selection. Typically, the first thing I like to do is hit the Clear Inputs button. What Clearing Inputs does is ensure that any of the selection options that you've made from a previous session are all cleared out so that you don't have to go through and find and set things back to a default setting. Up at the top, the first thing we'll notice are our selection options. Basically, SystemWise has three selection modes. If you're not sure about the selection modes, if you hit the I button, it will explain each of them. One is for the traditional constant speed selection. The other is for variable speed selection, which utilizes a variable speed drive to change pump speeds. And last is our all pumps at BEP head and flow. Sometimes you're not really sure about your selection criteria, and SystemWise actually allows you to see the product portfolio without entering a head and flow. If, for example, I accidentally hit get results, I've selected a product, and I haven't entered zero head and flow, SystemWise automatically reminds me that I can go to the selection mode, all pumps in the product family at BEP head and flow, and see the entire portfolio. Let's just try that briefly. So if I want to understand the E1510 portfolio, I can hit Get Results, and I will see the entire offering. In the design grid, I can sort by efficiency, I can sort by head, I can sort by flow, pump size, any of those options, motor horsepower that I want to use to review the offering. For example, if I wanted to see the highest flow pumps, you would see that the 8GB is the largest flow pump at 3500 GPM. So let's go back and actually make a selection for a variable speed pump. So I'm selecting variable speed. My next selection option is the type of controller. When making a variable speed selection, you have the option of either choosing censored control or sensorless control. This basically determines if the pump will operate with remote sensors in an area control scheme or without sensors using motor speed and power in a curve control scheme. Again, the information button has more information on these control strategies. For now, we're going to consider a censored controlling option. Next is the frequency. The frequency will default to your last selection, but remember, if you do make selections in both 50 hertz and 60 hertz and toggle between these, that you check that frequency out at the start of your selection. The next portion in, in our decision on our selection is looking at the product families. We have a handy I button that helps to make some quick reference suggestions for Bell & Gossett's recommended pump sizes, depending upon your capacity and head. So in this case, we're going to be looking at a selection of about 500 GPM at 100 feet ahead. So looking at the handy selection guide, I'm going to choose to look at an E1510 pump. Certainly there are other products that can handle that range, but for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to look at the E1510. You'll notice that there's an express select toggle button off to the right side. You can choose to look at your selections either by whole families of pumps or using express select, just look at individual products. So in this case, I'm going to just look at one product family. 
for this selection. As I mentioned, we're looking at a selection for 500 gallons per minute at 100 feet ahead. Notice that as soon as I tabbed over, that the system automatically selected a control head. So this, at this point, the system's assuming a closed loop and is calculating a control head that it's estimating at 30% of the total head. This is a good rule of thumb for a censored selection. If you have a specific calculated control head that you know your system will require, you can manually adjust it either by keying in another number or toggling up and down. For now, we're not looking at parallel pumps. We're looking at a single pump for this selection and we also are not requesting any standby capacity, but there are options to add those. We also have motor selection options. Right now the default settings are selected. It's going to choose motor selections based on a non-overloading motor, whereas we could change that to select based on a duty point motor. And if you have any questions about that, remember there's an I button to tell you the difference in how system-wise looks at those two selection choices. We also can consider motor overspeed options. If you turn on overspeed, it's going to ask you what speed motors you want to consider for your selection. And then it defaults to a NEMA standard motor. Again, you could request IEC motors if you're doing a selection for possible overseas installation. And it also allows you to select ODP or TEFC motors. If you are only considering a particular motor speed, you can select it here. The default will consider all motor speeds. There's also an option to choose fluids other than water, and there's a handy menu here that allows you to select ethylene glycol, propylene glycol, calcium chloride selections. For now, we're just going to consider water. When you click Get Results, the grid below is immediately populated with pumps that meet your selection criteria. As I mentioned uh, in our tutorial, on how to set up system-wise, you can go to your admin account and you can change which particular columns are visible to make it easier for you to select the pump in the manner that you're most comfortable with. I like to keep the curve preview there so I can see exactly where the curve fits for this pump in the current selection. And I also like to consider things like motor horsepower, and percent end of curve as I'm looking at my pump selection. This first one looks like a very good selection because we're not too close to the end of the curve and it looks like we're very close to the BEP. I can actually expand this curve to get a better look at where we're at in terms of trim size. Looks like we'll be utilizing the maximum trim for this pump. I can also see the variable speed selection. The nice thing about system-wise is that it automatically shows you how the pump will adjust speed in a partial load environment. We display 100% loading, 75, 50, and 25% in the system curve that is considering the control head you entered. At this point, I can either add that pump to a schedule by clicking this button and selecting from the schedules that I've already loaded or creating a new schedule. I can also add tags for that pump. You'll see that system-wise makes it very easy to choose accessories for that pump. I can add my controller right here. If I know my application voltage, 
phase, the type of enclosure I want, the type of disconnect I want, and whether I require a, by a bypass. By putting in those selections, I get a recommendation for a drive. I can also very quickly add that. So now, in my schedule, I will be adding a pump and drive. I can even add a suction diffuser or triple duty valve. In this case, let's check out a suction diffuser. Notice that SystemWise is automatically recommending suction diffusers that match my 4-inch suction for this pump. I can look at my pressure drop, connection type, and CV values, and select a model pump or a suction diffuser. Once I choose my materials of construction for the diffuser, I can add that. So now I've added all of those things to my schedule by clicking the Add button. Perhaps I needed more information and wanted to explore that pump a little bit deeper before I made that selection. If I click on this line, I will get the full product information on this pump, including flow, head, percent end of curve, runout flow, here's my PLEV value, here's an approximate floor space calculation for that pump and motor, the NPSHR for my duty point, along with the non-overloading brake horsepower for this pump and minimum shutoff head. So all the information you need is right here. Again, we'll see the same curves that I demonstrated before, including the constant speed curve. Notice the note at the bottom of the constant speed curve. System-wise, when choosing variable speed, does impeller sizing per the 2016 ASHRAE Handbook, Chapter 448 Guidelines. This ensures that if the non-overloading horsepower motor for this pump, in this case 20, is 20 horsepower, system-wise will select the maximum size impeller for that 20 horsepower application to ensure that you have the optimum efficiency design. If you have questions about that, please visit the ASHRAE Handbook for more information about selecting impellers with maximum impeller. You also have the ability, if at this point you wanted to trim the impeller, you can actually adjust the impeller diameter down. You can see here, by making that adjustment, now the impeller will no longer operate at reduced speed, but at more at full speed. Notice up top there is an operating point tied to the current speed and impeller trim along with the maximum duty point for your trim. In this case, because I've lowered the diameter of the impeller, I've lost a little bit of the maximum duty. Again, another reason for selecting the maximum impeller. You can see with the larger impeller that this pump at full motor speed has a capacity of 508 GPM and 102 feet. So I have a little extra capacity. In some cases, when you select a pump, the difference between your trim and the operating point will allow for even more additional capacity that you can utilize in this project if, the, if there's a change during commissioning or if later additional zones are added to the project. Again, you can add to the schedule right from here. You can also download any of the documents associated with this product, including dimensional drawings. There are some more tabs here. There's an overview tab with all the information about the 1510 product and even an operating cost tab. During the operating cost tab, you can adjust the percentage of time that you're operating during the day 
at the partial loads. You can also update your cost per kilowatt hour to match your, your part of the country. If you actually know the kilowatt hour cost for where this installation is, you can also update it manually. You can also update the number of days per year of operation. All of these pieces of information combined with the power required at all of those duty points of partial load help to generate an annual operating cost for this product. Notice that the software even tells you whether this pump is ASHRAE 90.1 compliant. 30% wattage at 50% flow. You will also see a comparison of costs for this product operated with the fixed DP sensor, what the additional cost would be if we increased the, the static head for sensorless operation. If you have questions about sensorless operation, Bell and God ha Gossett has a number of publications discussing the difference between censored and sensorless operation, just as a note. And it also has the opportunity for additional savings if you're able to operate with fixed DP reset on a building automation system. The other handy piece of information is a quick overview of dimensions for this product. All of this information, of course, is also included if you download a Bell & Gossett submittal. Hopefully this has given you a good overview of how to choose a basic variable speed selection of a Bell & Gossett pump. Look for some of our other tutorials on further things like parallel pumping and sensorless operation. Thanks for listening to this tutorial and we hope that you can continue to leverage the power of ESP system-wise.